We had a pizza dinner with great friends at Viennapoli and Epcot, and then enjoyed a fantastic fireworks cruise on the World Showcase Lagoon. And Scott got the answer to the question of how many times will they play Melt With You in one set? All this and more on episode 186 of the Mickey Fowl Podcast. Hello and welcome back everyone to another episode of the Mickey File Podcast. I'm Scott and with me is my lovely wife, Karen. Hello everybody. Who is in the middle of thinking about packing bags for uh, for our anniversary trip over to Disney. I know, I was just about to ask you. <laughs> T-shirts and shorts is the answer. Yes, but we also have a capture your moment. Got to dress for that. And an anniversary dinner. That's true. We're uh, kind of grossly unprepared, although we're better prepared than we were a few days ago. Yes. But I literally think we have like two ADRs for five days, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, actually, this morning at like two o'clock in the morning, I was able to get, or five o'clock in the morning, I was able to get the third. Oh, nice. Yeah. Yeah, almost one a day. Yeah, almost. When you go as often as we do, it's... It's not so structured. Yeah, sometimes nice to fly by the seat of your pants. Right. Which is what we'll be doing. I don't even know if we're going to bother, like, going to a park every day. Uh, We'll find out. Yeah, we'll find out. So, yeah, that's what we're doing right now. Yeah, it's very, very unstructured. Very unstructured. Yes. Any housekeeping? Well, just, you put it on Facebook. I guess housekeeping-wise, um, I want to say thanks again to Jason for standing in for you last week. Yes. Thank you very much, Jason. As we had kind of a uh, hectic week. Yes. We, well, week, I guess. It all started Friday night while we were on the fireworks cruise. Right. So, and I want to say thank you to everyone for all of your thoughts and words. It means a lot. Yeah. So it's, more, it's nice having a big family like that. For those not on our Facebook page, right. um, Aaron's mom passed away Monday the... 18th. 18th. There we go. Yes. At 94 years old. Yes. So... It's never long enough, but it was a long life. Yes, it was. Yeah, thanks for all the support to everyone, and sorry we cut our trip short. Yeah. The week before. Right. Or the weekend, the Friday before. Friday before, yeah. So, it was not fun. Now that that's all over with. Yeah, while we were there, it was a lot of fun. Yeah, it was. It was. Yes. And um, I don't remember where we stayed. <laughs> we stayed at Residence Inn. Oh, yeah. Right. Okay. So. Because I kept trying to. Yeah, get, yeah, yeah. Kept I trying to get a wait list. Right. So anyway, again, thanks for everyone who reached out. Yes. Thank you very much. It meant a lot. So with all that done, mm-hmm. uh, let's do news. Yeah. Put things up on a higher note. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Can only go up from there. <laughs> exactly. Um, Disney debuts the new official Walt Disney World annual pass holder Instagram account. And it's called WDW Annual Pass Holders. Yeah. Which- I assume it's going to mostly be the same stuff that they put on the Facebook page. But right. That's cool. Because a lot of people only do Instagram. Or do a lot yeah, of Instagram. Or do more on Instagram anyway. Right. So it'll be a nice way to be able to link things, mm-hmm. which is good. It is. Yeah. Um, Joy is... Now hit. we just have to get them to follow us. Yes. <laughs> you can figure that out. Yeah, I don't know. I, I, I trust you, babe. If they danced on stage... Did Irish dancing, I think I know how to figure it out. But oh, Yes, but I, I don't think they're doing that. No. No. 
I think we got half the dancers there or something like that following us, right? <laughs> Several of them. Yeah. So, um, Joy is heading to Pixar Plaza at Disney's Hollywood Studios starting on June 10th. Isn't that the one that was at Epcot, right? Yes. But I guess it's no more. Um, it was in the same area as Figment, so I think she's not there right now. Yes. Say, I thought that's where we saw her. Yeah, she was basically opposite of where Figment is now. Right. Because that's where Penelope Vel- and Wreck-It Ralph were, is where Figment is. Okay. So. We still haven't gotten our picture taken with Figment. No, we have not. We suck. I know. Maybe we'll try to do that this this trip. Yeah. They're debuting June 10th. Sing along at Celebracion Encanto. Stroll through the newly opened Communicore Plaza, Communicore Hall, and Mickey and Friends spaces at Epcot. Right. So now that they've given it an actual date, now they actually have to finish it. You know, it's a weird building. Like, they make process progress, right. and then they stop doing anything on it. It's like a government job. I know. We went by, so Monday and Tuesday we had, we did two golf courses at the same place, right? They have 36 holes. Okay. So we did one on Monday, came back Tuesday, did the other one, right? So we left about the same time both days because they're like the same size golf courses. Right. And they're doing construction work right on the corner where you get on Highway 52 and where you get on I-75. Okay. Right. Two days we pulled by there. The same five guys are there, and all five of them are standing around separately, not even, like, together, like, having a meeting or something. Right. Not doing anything. (laughs) And, like, Like, what time was this? What time of the day was it? 1230? Oh. That's not lunchtime. Okay. Construction people go to lunch earlier. Okay. Because you start earlier. True. They're just standing around. They weren't even eating. Like, nobody was eating or... They're just standing there. No, they were just doing nothing. Right. Okay. Is this government? Yeah, I mean, it's road work. Okay. On a state highway, so yeah, it's so government funded. Yeah. Yeah. Doing nothing. Doing nothing. Okay. But now Epcot has a date. They have to have it done. <laughs> I mean, well, they don't get, have to. Well, let me rephrase that. They have announced, officially announced an actual day, not a time frame. Yeah, and it's less than 90 days. So right. at that point, you you feel like they should. And this is an actual Disney one. It's not like a restaurant that's not a Disney yeah, restaurant. I know. You feel like they should have a pretty good grasp of the time frame at this point. Right. However, a corn dog stand that was already a food stand. Right. Is taking like, I don't know, a year. <laughs> like, I don't understand it. I, I don't either. They built a new stand in Hollywood Studios in far less time than it has taken to repurpose an existing stand. That's a carnival stand, man. Yeah. Like, people build houses in our neighborhood in way less time than it's taken to build a hot dog stand. I know. I don't get it. I don't either. And I don't know why I'm so concerned about a corn dog stand. Like it's corn dogs. But it's just it, because it's on the boardwalk. It's in a, it's in a very prevalent spot. I understand. There's no way they're going to be as good as the ones at like the Strawberry Festival. No, because that's just right. Disney could come out with deep fried Oreos. They are not going to be as good as the ones at the fair. Right, because that's going to be using the grease that's been used for everything. Right. Uh, anyway, yeah, I'm excited about this. Just if for nothing else, it means another wall will come down. Yes. I mean, I don't know. I haven't paid attention. I don't understand exactly what the whole Communicore thing is going to be at this point. But it, how it was originally described and how it the information is filtering that in about it. That stage looks nothing like the artist conceptions that we got right. originally. Right. 
and even they've, you know, said, you know, given updates about it, but it's still, it, it still doesn't look like what was understood, but yeah, whatever. No, blue sky. Epcot becoming a National Geographic special on the park's transformation is coming soon to Disney Plus and Hulu on April 29th. It seems like it's going to be kind of cool. They traditionally have done a pretty good job on these park history documentaries. Right. So I'm excited about that. I am too. And this next one I'm excited about. Epcot Germany Friendship Boat Dock has reopened while the Morocco Dock is being refurbished. I'm hoping that they keep both of them open. Well, see, that's been my it's been my issue with these since they brought the boat back. Mm-hmm. Was I know you don't need two docks. I mean, you don't even need the one, right? The one that's over near... I mean, um, the boat. You don't even need the boat. No, It's a it's, very cool thing to have. It's nice. I don't understand why they haven't been going... Canada? Basically, Canada to Morocco to Germany back to Canada. Right. Like, I don't know. Because it's a pretty long walk between Morocco and Germany. Yeah, and, and a pretty long other, walk from... Yeah. From Canada to Germany. Right. You know. It would just give a night, it would give you an, it would give you a break to be able to go to other spots of the World Showcase. Right. Probably the best way of describing it. Yeah. And, and for example, Mm -hmm. if you have a Guardian's virtual queue and then dinner at, I don't know, be in Napoli, you know, it was a, Decent way to get there, at least quicker. Right. It'd be better going to Germany, but. Right. You know, at least it was, it, at least it would help. It was just the next country. It's easier. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The Walt Disney Theater is has reopened with new seating and carpet and Disney's Hollywood Studios. Uh, in addition to the cosmetic changes. Blog Mickey reports that there have been some accessibility changes as well that should make it easier for guests in wheelchairs or ECVs. That's kind of cool. Wow, they redid the whole inside of the theater. Yeah. Uh, The bank of doors to the left side of the minutes until next show clock have been modified. Instead of three single wide door frames, there's one single wide door frame and one double wide door door frame. Hmm. So that's nice. Yeah. And a push to open accessibility button just out of frame. Oh, cool. Now, I don't necessarily understand that because I um, thought the doors just opened. Yeah. So, okay. Okay. That's kind of cool. Yeah, it looks very nice. It does look nice. Looks very clean. It does. More modern. The- mm-hmm. The theater is very bright for a movie theater. Yes. Uh, The Percy Jackson preview film has concluded, and the One Man's Dream film has returned. Okay. It did not appear that any upgrades had been made to the film itself. Okay. There you go. There you go. It looks really nice. It's very orange and yellow. Yes. Gold, whatever. Yeah. It looks very nice. Mm Mm-hmm. But the inside of the theater is just kind of weird because it's like all blue and light colors. And yeah. I don't know why that matters once the lights are off, but that's what it is. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Joe Rohde returns to Walt Disney Imagineering to teach a master's class work sessions. So they're getting ready to do big upgrades to his park. Hmm. The rumor when he first tweeted out or whatever he did the other day about being back. Yeah. Was that maybe that's why he was coming back. So it'll be interesting to see if he stays. Yeah. I mean, he's got a lot of knowledge. In regards to that park. You know, when he left, 
I heard a, you know, speculation. Okay. Man, he liked to travel the world and spend their money. True. <laughs> and that was, you know, maybe that's why, maybe that's why, Yeah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> especially he left when they were closed. All the parks were closed. Right. So cost cutting measure, but bring him back and fix some of this stuff. Very much. So, um, Mama Melrose at Disney's Hollywood Studios announces six new menu items coming on April 1st. They're going to have a rigatoni bolognese, a braised pork osobuco, fettuccine alfredo with shrimp, fried mozzarella sticks, um, a mushroom artichoke cheese dip, and a goat cheese mousse tart. You know, so we still haven't been there. We've canceled it a couple times. Yes. For various reasons. Yeah, but with those new offerings, sounds more interesting. So I don't know anything about the restaurant, like at all. Okay. Um, all right, here's a picture. Well, there was a picture. Okay. It's not really what I expected. Uh, kind of is. Kind of. The booze are, not the tables. The menu sounds a little more high class than the restaurant looks. Does that make sense? Yes. That makes sense. To me. But I'm kind of intrigued by the men- menu. Which, have- of course, changes the day we leave. Of course. Because of course it does. Of course it does. It's not like we won't be back. Yeah. So. I love fettuccine. But you'd have to get it changed. Yeah, but I mean, if they make it with shrimp, they'll make it with chicken. Right. So. There we go. So that comes on April 1st, so it's not April Fool's. Um, do I not know what Osabuco is? Who I thought. All right, so Osabuco is veal shanks. Braised veal shanks. Okay. Well, how exactly do you have pork osobuco? Just what they listed. Apparently, you're just not doing veal. Apparently. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Well, anyway. Okay. All right. Um, I guess they just didn't want to sell veal. Guess not. Breezeway. What is it? Breeze Airways. Yeah. Breeze Airways have announced three new flights to Orlando's MCO. These all start in October. Um, they have twice a week from Lansing, Michigan, starting on October 2nd. Twice a week from Bangor, Maine, starting October 3rd, and twice a week from Lan- Lancaster, Pennsylvania, starting October 8th. Interesting little airline. hmm Is this the one... This might be the one with the flight from MCO to Orange County. To John Wayne. Okay. Maybe that's Orlando. There's a flight from Orlando to Orange County. Mm hmm. Wow. Holy moly. Wait, so we could fly from Orlando to John Wayne on the 29th from $124. This has to be that airline. It must be. Well, it's 124. That's round. That's not round trip. Who cares? Yes, it basically looks like $400 round trip, give or take. And it's nonstop. Yeah. You leave at 945, you get there at noon. Now, I mean, I know that's. Is there one from Tampa? 
Bullock later? Yeah, there was. Holy crap, it's like super cheap. Well. Okay, anyway, so that's cool. That's the one. So our friends in Michigan, Maine, and Lancaster, Pennsylvania. Yeah. Uh, there you go. You're going to have options to get to Disney faster. Yeah. Yippee. Uh, Hulu on Disney Plus launched on March 27th, which is uh, today, right? Yes. Yeah, today, Wednesday, March 27th. It now has Hulu titles integrated as recommendations. Mm-hmm. Hulu Plus Live TV is not included in this. Right. Um, <clears throat> so I don't know. And so our Disney Plus has had Hulu on it for a um, couple months, I think. Right. Several weeks, anyway. Um, hopefully since they are announcing a launch, it has been fixed. Like our watch list was not available on Disney plus. Oh. So it was like starting all over to find anything on Hulu. Oh, gotcha. You know, and I don't know. We'll have to go play with it because our live, we have Hulu plus live TV. That's our live TV. Right. Um, so we'll have to see. Yes. Yeah. I mean, this is what they're doing and it makes sense. Put it all on one app instead of having to have two different ones. It, three if you include ESPN and four if you include this new sports thing they want to do with, you know, Paramount and whatever. Right. But that'll be cool. Like mm-hmm. I said, one one app is always better than a bunch of apps. Exactly. The Walt Disney Company and Central Florida Tourism Oversight District formerly the Reedy Creek Improvement District, have agreed to withdraw litigation at the state level and committed to abandon federal claims pending a mutual agreement on a long-term operating plan. Apparently all that's over with. That's good. It is. You know, neither side wanted a bunch of litigation hanging over their heads any longer than it had to, and now let's just get back to working together. Exactly. And actually working together. Exactly. DVC News. Disney has created an online virtual tour of the cabins at Fort Wilderness. Reservations will open to members with DVC points at other resorts on April 23rd, 2024, subject to the seven-month window. First updated cabins are set to open July 1st. Direct sales um, have not exploded in February of 2024 for the cabins. They um, had sold 69 deeds in February. Um, Only 30 of the 363 cabins have been declared, so less than 10% so far. So they sold the whole month of February. Right, we were on a cruise from the 20th to the 28th, and they were doing. They were still. They were going for sale. Yeah. Like right when we came back. Yes. Those dudes are scary. Yeah. And the resale restrictions. Yes. So. Yeah, that do it. Those dudes are really scary. That's the reason. If you have resale points, you can't use them to stay at the cabins. No, you cannot. And if you buy these resale, you're not going to be able to stay anywhere but the cabin. Right. So even weirder, scarier. Right. Right. But I think mostly it's the dues. Holy cow. Yeah. Dues is scary. That's it for news. Yep. So we went what was supposed to be a weekend trip that became a overnight. Yeah. And barely. Barely, yeah. Um, went to Epcot. Mm-hmm. We got to see Tony Anna Michael, Deirdre. Mm-hmm. Mandy and her family. Yep. Your partner. My partner. It was a very fun evening. We did have a anyway. lot of fun. We all rode Guardians together. Yeah. All of us did. There was, what, nine of us? Yeah. Uh, yeah, it yes. was an odd number, right? Was yeah, it, it was Four nine. and four and one. Yeah, nine. Nine, rode, nine of us rode Guardians together, which is fun. 
It was. We got. Disco uh, Inferno, September? September. One of those songs. Oh, okay. we got September. I think so. That was good. Yes. We had dinner at Via Napoli. Mm-hmm. It was kind of dinner at Via Napoli. The pizza was good. The pizza was good. Now, we got three pizzas for eight of us. Right. Um, the Malinows- Malinowski's got the round ones. And we got the large Yeah, we got can. the yard. The yard, right. The meter pizza. Right. I don't understand what a meter pizza is. It's not it's not a square meter. It's not thirty nine inches I, long. I, I don't I don't understand what the meter pizza is, but it's a good pizza. Right. And there was four of us eating on that. And that now, was fine. The one Mandy and Chris had was a little burnt on one side. Yeah. Got a little too close to the fire, or they said it. They yeah. didn't turn it, or something. Yeah, I don't the know. Ov- the oven was uh, apparently a little overheated on one side. Yeah, uh, but it still looked like a. They they went through it pretty good. The family. Yeah, and then ours was we got half cheese, half half pepperoni, mm-hmm. and they got a what margarita and a pepperoni, I think, or mac- right. And they also got a salad that Chris and um Mandy split. Yeah. How salad it looked pretty good. It's huge. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, nine bucks for real. What for that salad? No. Oh. oh, well, next time we got to get that. Just get the salad. Yeah, it looked delicious. It was. It, it, it looked really good. I mean, yeah. I mean, it was a salad, but yeah, you know. but it was very nice looking salad. Yeah. yeah. And then you got the what limoncello flight. I did, which is the same limoncello flight they have uh, right across the little plaza there at... Um, Tudo Gusto? Tudo Gusto. Right. So it's an interesting little little drink flight. It was cool. Yeah. And I ordered an espresso martini, and this was definitely not the same espresso martini that came from Tudo Gusto. No, it wasn't. But did you like it? It was okay. The Limoncello flight was $24. It comes with Limoncello Classic, uh, a cream, and a pistachio, which is also like the cream. Right. Um, but it's good. It's Like I said, it's a little interesting little thing. It's pretty good. hmm And then um, Tony Ann got what? an ap- Amaretto sour, sour. Right? Oh, no, she got an Aperol. Oh, ap- uh, Aperol spritz or something? Yeah. And then that's the one I figured I'd try while we were there. Yeah, okay. And Michael We don't know if it was any good or not because they left it sitting on the bar like for half an hour. Yeah, I know. <laughs> but. We kind of all said that I like the food at Via Napoli, but it is super hit or miss on service. Yes. Um, you either are in and out of there in about 25 minutes or. It takes it's forever. Just forever. Right. So, in between those would be great. Yes. Um, I'll it's, just say that we did not get necessarily in between those. Right. So, but the company was fantastic. Yeah, it was. Yes. And the food was good. The food was good. It just, you know, right. I miss. Service is always just a little lacking there. And, of course, it's not a Disney restaurant. Right. Which does matter. Right. Very much so. But anyway. Right. I'm not complaining about it. It just wasn't great service. But the food was good and it wasn't, it's not super expensive. No. You know, even for pizza. Right. So. Yeah. Um, we left there and we had Remy. Yes, we had Remy and Mandy, Tony, Ann, and I stopped at Morocco to get a drink. Right. I stopped at U.S. at the U.S. because Modern English was getting ready to play. Right, and that mattered to you. Yeah, I wanted to see them. Yeah, I make fun about them having one song. Apparently, they have more than one. They did. They had, they have a new album out. Wow. And it was actually pretty good. Mm-hmm. The, the two songs they played from it were pretty good. Cool. Um. Not at all, not at all like 1980s alt rock or, you know, pop, mm-hmm. alt pop. 
but new wave music. There mm-hmm. we go. Okay. Um, it was entertaining. They were pretty good. They, they know how to play a crowd. Good. Yeah. It was funny when it came time for I Melt With You, which was the last song. Right. They, uh, he like, you know, motioned for everyone to stand up. And then he goes, put away your phones and just enjoy it. Every time we play this buddy, bloody song, it's like phone central. Yeah. <laughs> well. It's their song. Because, you know, we didn't get to take phones to concerts in 1985. Exactly. The last time I saw you guys play this song. So it was very cool. You know, it, it was fun. I'd, I'd go back and see them again. Good. But it, it was funny. Yeah. I also sat there listening to them and realized that that song was kind of different than the rest of their catalog. Oh. And that I would love to hear them like cover a Clash song. Like. I could, I could see that. Like they were more like. <clears throat> the rest of their stuff was more. Um, like post punk than eighties pop. Okay. Yeah. So it was pretty good. I'm actually glad I stopped and did that. Then I kind of had to haul it to get over to, um, where were we? yacht club? Yeah. To get on the boat. Yeah. Cause but we were, I made it right. We were going to go on Remy, but the la- the lightning lane entrance was all the way to the end of La Crapery. And it, we looked at our watch. We're like, it's seven o'clock. That There's happened not before. a chance we're going to make it. Right. That happened before we went by there and the lightning lane line was crazy. Crazy long. And we're like, yeah, we're not going to make it. And Cam was okay with it. Avery really wanted to give her cast member gifts out. Tron has been really bad about like hour and a half waits for virtual queue times. Yeah. So, I don't know. They got to... They got to figure out something. Is it possible that Disney is overselling those? Uh, I don't Say know. it ain't so. I don't know. But... So, you guys skipped it. Yes, we did, did skip and it. And I skipped it and went to a concert. Right. So, so it worked. And then... um there were a whole bunch of people that got to ride a little faster because we skipped it. Exactly. So then Mandy and myself in Deirdre stopped at um, Hurricane Hannah's. Hannah's. That's it. And grabbed a drink to go. And then walked over to the dock. Boat dock. Yeah. And I um, I had to make it from the... American Garden Theater to there pretty quickly. Yeah. The longer walk than you think it is when yeah, you I know. start it. Yeah. Because then you have to go all the way to the ramp and then go down and International Gateway and then out. So. Right. So, but we met, we all made it. We did. I mm-hmm. took the boat when I got to the International Gateway. I was like, eh, forget this. <laughs> so I took a boat. Yeah, that's fine. Which was very cool. Yes. And we had a fantastic boat captain for a fireworks cruise. We did. Victoria. Victoria. She was part of the group, but, you know. Right. And and she's got her whole, like, you know, little tour she's supposed to give, but she realized that we were more interested in just hanging out than, right. you know, hearing about this and that, so... Right, because all of us, I think, except for Deirdre, had already been on one. Had been on the one for Epcot. Oh well, yeah, because we all went together, so we knew we'd done one. Right, a year ago, basically. Yeah. So we already knew all the little stories behind it all. Right. So yeah. we've talked about this before, but when you get to the World Showcase Lagoon, mm-hmm. out of Crescent Lake, they they tie all the boats together. All the pontoon boats. Mm -hmm. And they tie them together right there, like underneath the bridge or just past the bridge. Yeah, just past it. um, At, it's not really France, between France and England. Right. And you were right there. Yes. I thought a couple of times with the lights and water, I was going to go blind. Like, 
right at us. Right. And there was a couple of the launching ones from the launching fireworks were right there. Yeah. Felt like they were in the boat. Yeah. I mean, you could feel the heat and the, and the propulsion from them. It is a fantastic way to watch a fireworks It really show. is. I still don't love that fireworks show. But you liked it a little bit more from this view, right? Still don't love it. It's not like it's not harmonious, but no. it's not as it's better it's, than Epcot Forever. Is it growing on you a little bit? No. Okay. And I've seen it from multiple angles now. Okay. I will say again. I don't love the music because harmonious the music fit epcot by doing it in native tongues correct which they don't do with this right or maybe they do and it's just not memorable but harmonious was right yes visually the show is stunning yes but every time you start to get into it fireworks stop and the water stops and the lights stop moving and the music stops and then the narrator talks mm-hmm you need to keep and things going. And then they going. start again. Right. There's, I don't know. I, I just I, don't like the flow to the show. I think something needs to keep going. What, even if they're going to, if they have to have the narration, keep something going to keep you, you engaged. Know, with illuminations, whenever the narrator would just start talking, the ball was still moving around and the lights were on it. And right. It was still doing something. That was all really cool. Right. It's very cool the way they do, like, the, you know, hello, hola, bienvenidos, mm -hmm. blah, 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 around the world. Right. And shoot off a firework from each country. That's very cool. Right. But they could do that um, more than once. Right. But, I don't know, just every time I start to care, the whole thing stops and there's talking. Yeah. And then it starts again. Right. And... The finale is way better than any finale they'd ever had at Epcot, other than on the first, yeah. you know, New Year's Eve. Right. Visually, the show is stunning. The yes. fireworks, the lights, the mm -hmm. the fountains, and all the stuff that's going on. But man, it's just not. Yeah, they, I don't know. It's just not emotional. No, not like Har harmonious was very emotional. Or happily ever after, or even yeah. even the dreaded. Disney enchantment that people didn't like, but liked once they added Mickey and Walt at the beginning. And yep. I don't know. This one's just missing something and it's mostly just continuing to do fireworks instead of talking. That's what's missing. Yeah. Or even just lights or something mm -hmm. lights and fountains or something. They don't even have to do fireworks, just some lights. And then, and then as soon as like 10, like what, five minutes after the show ends, there's no lights in the lagoon. Okay. Well, five minutes after the show ends, the park's been closed for 40 minutes. <laughs> so, I mean, well, I'm okay with that. Get out, <laughs> you know? Yes. But on Harmonious, they still had stuff going on in the lagoon. They still had lights in the lagoon. I, I understand. So that's just my own thought. Right. No. Okay. Um, anyway. So then after that, we came back and then we set our, oh no, we went to uh, Martha's Vineyard for another drink with Deirdre. We did. Yes. And uh, Martha's Vineyard never disappoints. Never. It is. That was very close to 10 o'clock by the time we got there. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And um, it was not crowded, but it was still open. Right. So good, good spot, especially after the fireworks. Right, and then and then we all shared a shared an Uber back because we, uh, yeah, yeah, and that worked out well. Yeah, and we had decided because of what we were doing and not wanting to have to get from yacht club back to our car in the Epcot parking parking lot and not being able to park it up at yacht club at right. two o'clock in the afternoon. Right. We had Ubered over and we Ubered back and it all worked out great. Yeah. Dropped Deirdre at Polly. Yeah. And then went to the Residence Inn in Flamingo Crossing. Stayed again. Yep.
So it was a trip that was cut short, but it was a very fun trip, and we did a lot in, in, a, in a, seven a, hours yeah. that we were actually in a park. Right. Not even, probably seven hours. Yeah. Um, I will continue to do Via Napoli because it's good food and it's affordable and the food's always good. Right. Don't love the service, but I'll continue to eat there. Right. Until a better option comes. Right. We did see that the walk-up was open. Yeah, the whatever it's called, pizza window was finally open again. It has not been open for a while. No. It was there. And those pieces, those pieces were gigantic. So the, uh, the slice was huge. Yes. And took a picture. A pepperoni slice was nine bucks. The margarita was eight fifty, and they had a tiramisu a la Nutella. Hey, there's something. What? They actually use the word Nutella? They use the word Nutella in quotes, oh. but it also has a registration mark. Oh. Um, mascarpone cream, espresso coffee, Savio Arti biscuits, and Nutella. Wow. That's the first time I've actually seen Nutella used at yeah. Disney on a menu. I... Super cool there. Mm-hmm. I wonder if that's a that an Italian food, but an Italian product. It's know. also not a Disney restaurant, so maybe that's why. Yeah. So maybe we'll have to try one of those this weekend. Yeah, I'm a big fan of tiramisu. Mm-hmm. Launched in Germany, so guess not. Guess not. Oh, except that Ferrero, originally from Piedmont, Italy, created the precursor to Nutella. So there you go. So that's opened back up. Of course, I took a picture of the menu and, oh, yeah, Pizza Al Taglio. There you go. There's the name. There we go. So that was open back up. So I hope it stays open. I'll go grab pizza from there. I know. And if they got mobile order, it's going to be like a game changer. Oh, yes. Um, that's about all we got for this week. We're getting ready to go back and spend a few days. And yes, for our anniversary. I don't know why it doesn't feel like our anniversary. Because this year sucked so far. Yeah. Actually, kind of. it's not true. We've been on a cruise. We've done stuff. Like, this is just. Just another weekend. Yeah, almost. <laughs> It'll be exciting come tomorrow because we're renting a car to go. I know. We decided to do something fun. Yeah, we're renting a Tesla. I know. It sounds crazy. But it. it it's one of those people go, oh, you want to go for a test drive? Sure. And you drive it for 10 minutes and you really don't know if you like it. Right. But we're going to have it for like four or five days. Right. And this way we'll kind of get the full scope of it. Yeah. Plus it's cool. Yeah. And if it isn't, it just costs us a car rental. Yeah. So we'll be back with our Tesla review. I think, <laughs> I think that's going to do it. Yep. Yeah. Yep. All right. Thanks again, everybody, for uh, checking us out. Follow us on Instagram at MickeyFile underscore podcast. And on Facebook, uh, the Mickey File Improvement District. Don't forget to like, follow, subscribe. Uh, rate or review would be helpful also on uh, Apple or Spotify. I'm not sure if anybody else does it, but I know they do. Okay, cool. Yeah. And uh, if you want to reach out to us for whatever reason, if you want to be on the show or give us a show ID or a idea or whatever, um, email address is Mickey File Podcast, all one word, at gmail.com. Goodbye. Good night, everybody. Thank you. Thank you.